after this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, Our Father, which art in heaven, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Joshua this morning. Yeah, the book of Joshua. And here's what we're going to do. This is, a, this is going to be a topical message this morning about what we'll see here in this message this morning. And Joshua, we're going to be in Joshua. If you have your Bible, see, you have to look at that. You've got a table there. You can open up. You can take notes. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through, 1 through 19. And if you will, open up your Bibles. If anybody needs one, we'll get your Bible. But the interesting thing here is for us, when we look at this Joshua, the book of Joshua, here we see, uh, we, hear jo we see Joshua, Moses has, Moses has died, and now Joshua is going to, that generation has died, the exodus is over, the exodus is over, right, they've came from Egypt oh, for 40 years across the desert, and they're wandering across the desert, God's given them manna, he's given them, you know, he's given them the food and the nourishment they need to get through, but a whole generation has to die off. And now Moses is dead, and where are they? They're on the other side of the Jordan River. And what, where are they going? Joshua is now going to lead them to where God has promised them the land. He's promised them the land. What land is that? Canaan. What is that? The promised land. And now Joshua is going to lead them, right, from the Exodus into the promised land. And they're going to have to claim this land. Which is awesome when you think about it, to claim a sin. And I kind of, why I chose this scripture this morning was, you know, throughout the course of ministry, and if you've been in ministry, and I've been in it for a while, me and Debbie have been in it for a while, and there's a lot of well digging. And if you read Genesis chapter 26, where they, they're digging wells and they're digging wells, well, they're digging wells to get blessed until they find the next place to get nourishment, water. And that's kind of like where we're at, we, where we're at this morning is that, is this, we're digging a new well here. We're digging a new well. In this building, right, it's a building, but we're the church, right? Jesus, we're the, we're the body of Christ. But now we have a new, is it a new land? Well, I don't know. Here we're in Lenoka Harbor, Lacey Township. But we still all come from Bayville, Berkeley, Whiting, all over. But it's still kind of a new, it's kind of refreshing, a new land. And we'll see some different things here in these verses this morning that will help us I think maybe get a, a scope because sometimes when you when you go into a new land, you gotta make you gotta make your stand. You gotta make your stand. It's just not, not just showing up and going, okay, we got a church now. You know, sometimes we gotta make a stand. Whether we meet a fireman out in the parking lot, we tell them the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. Or someone when you leave here, hey, here's the good thing about logistics about this place. Right after church, you can go to Walmart. <laughs> or a Lido, or you got Wawa, so we got we got a kind of like a good logistical space here. You can go, go shopping afterwards. So, but that's our land. This is our land here. So let's read this scripture in Joshua together. Before we do, what do we always do? Let's pray and ask the Lord to move this morning into the Holy Spirit in this building here this morning through us, right, into your heart this morning. However that happens, whether it's one word, one verse, or a group of verses, 
how God touches your heart this morning to give you application, to give you exhortation, to give you wisdom, to give you knowledge, to do what? To walk out that door, like I always say, a little better than when you came in. And that's spiritually I'm talking about, and maybe, maybe physically too, right? The Lord heals, doesn't he? The Lord heals. So let's pray before we get into the word. Father God, Lord, thank you. And I always say thank you, Lord, because I truly am thankful that I am even standing here this morning, Lord, to preach the good news, Lord, of, of, of the scriptures that you've given us through the course of history, Lord, to, give us, to teach us, to give us knowledge, wisdom, and guidance, Lord, and guidance how to live in obedience and live in truth and live in harmony with each other. And that's an important thing this morning, Lord, that I hope we grasp from these scriptures how these Israelites come together finally and they move and take their land. And I pray we take our land this morning, whether it's individually, uh, as a group, as a church, Lord. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 So let me get my Bible out here. Let's read. We're going to read verses 1 through 9 first, right? Chapter, nine, uh, chapter 1 of Joshua. And he says here in Joshua, this is God's commission now to Joshua, right? Now Joshua's this great leader now. He's the, he's the new leader. He's the new leader of, of Israel. And he says here, after the death of Moses, see Moses is passed on, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. That's verse 2. Now therefore, arise, go over the, over the Jordan, this Jordan, meaning the Jordan River, right? They're going to cross over this river now. They cross over to the Jordan. And he says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and from the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all land is to the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down, the sun shall be your territory. Verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as it was with Moses. See, there's that word there. No, no, no man shall be able to stand, see? That's an important verse right there. That I will, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. In verse 6 he says, Be strong and of good courage. For, this, for the, to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And in verse 7 he goes on to say, Only be strong and be very courageous now, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to do. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may do what, he says here? You may prosper wherever you go. And then in verse 8 he says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in day and night, that you may observe to do accordingly all that is written in it. For then, then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We're not talking about the prosperity gospel here, by the way, in case you're thinking that. Verse 9, I, have, I, have I not commanded you, be strong of good courage and do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So here, again, he says in these verses, he's talking in these, God's talking to him and he's given this, he's given this command to Joshua and he's telling him, he's basically telling him, this land is your land. This is the land that I've given you that I promised way back to Abraham, right? If you remember in Genesis. And, you know, and sometimes there's a lot of misunderstanding, even in like our Christian life. The thing that when we got into, think about this. When we got into, uh, when we were saved, we didn't realize, and, and it's going to be a battle because, you know, the book of Joshua is a book, it's, it's, it's a historical book in the Old Testament, which the Jews call the Tanakh. It's a historical book, but a lot of it is military conquest. There's a lot of battles going on. There's a lot of battles. And they were, and, and the Israelites, they were outnumbered many, many times. And they had, you know, there was a lot of situations where, they probably thought, well, we're not going to make it here. But they had to rely and trust on God here. So here, he's telling them, and it's for us like that when we get saved. We don't realize, we, we get saved and we go, oh, this is great, I'm saved. But then we don't realize that what comes down the road is the battle. 
the battle, the spiritual battle that we go through. And you know what? Sometimes that battle is every day, and that's what the Israelites are going to face here going forward. But God speaks to them in these verses, right? And he says, and for us too as Christians, what are we engaged in? We're engaged in this warfare. I don't know if you've ever been in spiritual warfare lately, but I think I've been, sometimes I feel like I'm weary of it lately. But you know what? I'm going to keep going because this is our land. This is the land God gave us. This is, we're going to show up here, and we're going to bless this place on Sunday. And we're going to walk out of here, and maybe God's going to put people in our path to bring them here next week to church, invite people to church. This is our land. And I say here to us, don't fret. Because in Ephesians, remember Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, he says, For we, what, what is the problem here that Paul talks about? He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. This is the world we're in today. This is, they might, the world might trip you up right now in your land. If you understand what I mean, I'm talking about your spiritual heart here. See, because in our own strength, think of it this way. And I've battled with this in the last few weeks. In my own strength, I couldn't even get out of bed. But in my spiritual strength, the Lord helped and lifted me up. Right? And the good news is this. There's nothing more powerful than our God. I don't know if you believe that in your heart this morning. There's nothing more powerful in your life than God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he tells us, You, here, listen, we heard John speaks here. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them. See, you're overcomers. You overcome. Whether you want to or not, God gives you the strength to overcome all these different battles that we're going to go through. Because it says here, John goes on to say, because he, he who is in you, meaning Jesus Christ, is greater than he who's in the world. Do you believe that this morning? Do you really believe that this morning? That Jesus is greater than anything else in this world? As long as he's here, though, he's got to be here in your heart, and you've got to be in that word. You've got to be in that scripture, because the battle is always going to be this, and there's always hope. And I talked about this, I think it was last week, because in our hope, and I love this word, in our hope that we have, there's victory, right? We don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to live and constantly walk around, and sometimes I get overcome with, I feel, defeat. But there's victory. There's always victory for us. And why, why do I say that? Because in Romans, which, by the way, the next book we're going to go to, this is our topical message. If you want to read ahead, starting next week, we're going to be in the book of Romans. And Romans says this, chapter 8, verse 31, it says, that, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Do you believe that this morning? All these things that come against you, you know God is for you. God is with you. He told us in the scripture, he will not leave or forsake you. And then in Romans 8, 37, he tells us, yet in there, these things, we are more than conquerors. You see, not just we're conquerors, we're more than conquerors. And we're talking about on a spiritual level too, but also in this world, we don't have to live in defeat. We can live in victory. We're more than conquerors, not through you, but through him, Jesus Christ, who, and we talked about this in the Psalms we read this morning, who loved you. Do you believe Jesus loves you this morning? No, really, do you believe that Jesus loves you? Yeah, I know some of us think, how could he love me? And I get that, but he loves you. Jesus loves you this morning. The Bible tells us this, and it's always going to tell you the truth, by the way. That book is always going to tell you the truth. The Bible tells us that we are receivers of victory. We're receivers of victory. Through who? The Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 57, one of my favorite verses, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, I know you all sense this right now. I know you all do. Either that or you're just walking around with your head in the sand. We're engaged in a battle right now with evil on many, many levels. Don't just walk through this life going, ah, everything is good. We're in a battle, Christians. We're in a battle with evil right now. And it's not, this is not to make you feel nervous or scared or afraid of... Remember what I just said. We over, we're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. We live in victory. This world can't... God has taken care of that for us. You know? So keep that expectation to walk in victory in your life. Walk in victory in your life. That's what this... You say, well, Tom, we're in Joshua, what are you talking about? That's what Joshua here, in these first few verses, that's what this book of Joshua represents. It, this book, he finds that Moses has died, and then new leader Joshua, 
has been appointed to lead the nation where? Into Israel, which is called Canaan. Which is called Canaan. Hey, this could be our Canaan right now, right? Where God has led us. And after 40 years, they're wandering in the wilderness. Israel is about to take possession, like I said before, of the land which God promised Abraham. And that's in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, right? He says, then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendants, here, he's talking to Abraham right now, or Abram before, right, before he's Abraham. And he says, to your descendants, I will give you this land, meaning the promised land, meaning the land right now in Israel. That's their land. Oh, there's many countries trying to encroach on their land, but they will not get it. They will not get it. They're there to build an altar to the Lord who appeared to them. See, Joshua, Joshua is about to battle these battles with Israel, faced in order to what? To claim the promise, because that's what he's doing. He's, now Joshua has to cross over into Jordan to claim the promise that was given to Abraham. See, God uses different, you may, you may think, well, wait, he gave it to Abraham, but then Moses led him through the wilderness, but then Moses... Moses strikes the rock and God says, no, nope, you're not going to the... And then he gives it to Joshua. Now Joshua, see, Joshua leads him into the, into the promised land. See, Joshua, like I said before, it's a book of warfare, it's a book of suffering, it's a book of great victories. And Joshua can teach us, if you want to read Joshua this week, be, by all means, do it. Joshua can teach us much about... And again, I repeat this over and over again because I want you to dwell in this. Your spiritual victory that you have, the spiritual victory in your life in this hard life that we live here. I know, we, look, it's not easy. It's a hard life, but again, the spiritual victory is, I don't know about you, for me, the spiritual victory has given me, when I don't want to go on, the spiritual victory inside of me, meaning the Holy Spirit leads me forward. Leads me forward. Sometimes in strength that I don't have, which, which we talked about last week in, in the park. And Canaan, right, this land, this promised land, is a, a picture of victory. That's, and that victory is still available to every one of us who are what? Children of God this morning. Do you believe it? Do you believe that this morning? Do you really take it into your heart this morning? And I just want to tell you, you might feel like you're in the wilderness, but take that step out of it. Take, your step out, take the step out of the wilderness. Cross into the, our promised land right now. And that's, our promised land is our faith in Christ. That's what it is. That's truly what it is. And enter into that spiritual victory. This land is our land right now. And I just felt that coming here and through the last couple of times, talking to the president, I just, well, okay, Lord, is it the most ideal? I don't know. But you know what? You gave it to us. You gave us that. In the last second, right, the Lord comes through. But now it's for us to say, that's right, it is ours, Lord. It's not the world's land. And the verses that we just read, I pray that it helps us understand what's going to take from wandering, wandering around, right? And I know we have a tendency to do that because then we get sucked into the world's, the world's mission, right? So here, I'll give you these three truths. There's three truths given here that we need to understand this morning. And I, when I say need to understand, it's something to try to grasp onto this morning. That Canaan, land, Canaan is our land. And that call, those first verses, 1 through 9, that was a call from God. And you know what? Maybe we got pushed out of that league, but this is the call of God now to put us here. Do you believe it? This is the call of God. Whether you might sit here and go, I don't know. But this is the call of God. Now just trust in that. Because then, the, you know what? We'll be blessed. There'll be blessings that come from this. And so then in verse, those verses 1 through 4, there was the call to claim that land. And Joshua was reminded here that the Lord has already given the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. He's already given it to them. And he's already given it to us. So there was no more need for wandering. So that means for us here, we kind of booked this place out for almost a year. For a year. So there's no need for us to wander right now. <laughs> and go, oh, we've got to find a place, we've got to find a place. Right? We're booked for a year. We don't have to wander. So this land, so just now claim this land. Not name it, claim it. Don't come walk out of here. Tongue prosperity preacher. No, no, no. Because sometimes I see, you know, I sometimes, and I do see this, and I know you guys probably see it. Sometimes us Christians, we walk around, sometimes, have you, I, it breaks my heart to see Christians that are defeated. Meaning they give it, they're given up. 
And I know it happens. And then when I say given up, it's like, I don't want to do this anymore, Lord. And you know what? Sometimes I even felt that way. Like, I quit, Lord. I can't do this anymore. When I was feeling down and, and pretty crumb, crummy. But that's, that, that was being defeated. And I had to rise up through the Lord Jesus Christ, through his word, and through your prayers probably, and get out of that spiritual illness. In 2 Corinthians, it tells us, now thanks be to God who always leads us in what? Triumph in Christ and diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I believe that in all my heart, this, that God did not save you or me to be defeated. To be defeated. Don't walk around with your, you know, you know stuff's going to come at you and it's going to be hard, but that doesn't mean we live in defeat. We live in that victory, and I keep saying it over and over again because it's vitally important right now to where we are in this time on this planet. I do see a lot of us sometimes we can be overwhelmed with the things that are around us right now, especially when you have a physical illness or, uh, uh, you know, things that maybe in your life are going, whether it's a financial thing or an emotional thing or a relational thing with your family or, or something at work. I think those things are so exacerbated right now, we've got to be really careful that we don't walk in defeat. We saw, look, in verses 5 and 6. Look at verses 5 and 6. What is he, what is he saying there? What is he saying here, God, to them? He's given, a, he's given them a call. He's given Joshua a call to confidence, right? You got confidence? Do you have confidence in that book? Do you believe it? Do you have confidence in that book this morning? That's what he's doing here in that verses 5 and 6. Joshua is reminded of this, of the promises of those verses. And he's noticing this. Look, what God has promised him. Here's what God promised him. Look, in verse 5. He gives him the promise of victory over every enemy. Doesn't he say that? Look at verse 5. And then in verse 5, he also says the promise of presence and the power of God. He promises also in verse 5 the promises of his faithfulness of God. Those are pretty powerful right there, right? The victory over every enemy, the promise and presence and power of God, the promise of the faithfulness of God. That's in one verse, in verse 5. And then in verse 6, he goes, this is the promise of absolute victory. And then in verse 6, he's the promise of God to keep his promises. God will keep his promises. All those promises in that book, God keeps them. God keeps them. You may not see them, but you know what? Try and look in there and try to find the promises of God. There's quite a few of them. So what, what, here's the thing. All those things we just read in verse 5 and 6, what did Joshua have to do to make these things happen? What did he have to do? Just one thing. Trust God. Trust God this morning. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust. Believe me, you trust yourself, sometimes you can get in trouble. Trust God this morning. Trust God this morning because God was going to give, here's the deal, God's going to give them the victory. God's going to give Israel the victory. Ultimately, oh, you know what the ultimate victory is going to be? When Jesus sits on the throne in Jerusalem, that's going to happen. The center of the universe will be in Jerusalem one day when Jesus is on the throne that's absolute victory that's what we're going to experience one day grasp on to that this morning they're going to happen these things are going to happen because Joshua and for Joshua to be part of it all Joshua had to do was God told him this to have faith Joshua have faith these things I'm telling you have faith believe in them go get the land faith is important faith is vitally important Hey, faith goes like this. I don't think faith is like one steady street. Faith goes up and down and up and down. Hopefully up, 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 up. And stronger and stronger and stronger. But we do battle with that sometimes, right? But that's trusting God is having faith in that he is who he said he was. The same promises here. I really believe this. The same promises that God made to Joshua are for me and you this morning. They're for us this morning. And you can still, brothers and sisters, I exhort you that you can still count on the Lord to do everything he promised Joshua he would do. He still gives victory. God still gives victory over all of our enemies. You have enemies this morning? I don't know what type of enemies. I'm not even just talking about physical enemies. In, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, he says this, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That's you and I. 
right? You're born again. You're overcomers. You're more than conquerors. This world, yeah, there'll be battles, but John says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That's the victory. You have to live in faith, right? It's not about jumping through hoops and checking all the boxes. It's about believing, believing that Jesus gives you the strength and the power and the hope to keep going when you can't, when you can't. That's faith. Lord, I don't know what this means, but I believe you'll get me through it. Lord, I don't know if I can get through it, but I'm going to leave it up to you because you're the most high. You're the most powerful. You're the sovereign God. That's faith. It also tells us in verse 5, he who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes, there it is, that Jesus is the Son of God. There it is. It's just almost kind of a simple, not a simple uh, exhortation, but it tells us, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. He'll help you through this. Because look, Jesus, whether you see him here this morning, whether it's in your heart, the Holy Spirit, through God's word, he's still ever present. God is ever present. The Holy Spirit is ever present and is all powerful. Remember that, Christian. This, this week, when you walk and get, maybe you come, come up against some stumble, stumbling blocks or some potholes, remember that Jesus walks this walk with, with you. He tells us in Hebrews, let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content. It's an important word. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Didn't he say that in Joshua? He will never leave. Jesus will never leave or forsake you. You believe it this morning? Jesus will never leave or forsake How about that? How many people in your life have left you? How many people in your life have forsaken you? Whether it's family, job. How many? I can make a list. Not that I'm mad at him or angry with him. But Jesus never left me. He never forsook me. Even when I turned away or kind of... You know, we kind of sometimes slip out the side door with Jesus and say, I'll be back. I'll be right back. And we get sucked up in the world. He's still faithful. Do you believe that, Christian, this morning? Even when you sometimes turn away, he's still faithful. He'll, he'll never leave or forsake you. He might not chase you down. He's not going to chase you down and say, come on back here. He might put it on your heart to turn back to him. But sometimes I think, you know, we expect, you know, well, you know, God will... So I'll go back when I'm ready. He's always willing and able. Whatever happens to you, he's still faithful. Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things. He says that I have commanded you. Lo and behold, I'm with you even to the end. And he still gives us absolute victory, doesn't he? In Revelation chapter 20, he says, God will wipe away. Do you love this verse? And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. That's what's ahead for us. There'll be a day when there's no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain in this life when we'll be living in glory in Christ. God still keeps his promise. Jesus keeps his promises. In Romans chapter 4, 21, he tells us, and being fully convinced that he, what he had promised, see, being fully convinced, you have to be fully convinced in that book, what God has promised, he tells us here in the scripture, Paul, he was also able to perform. God, meaning God will do it. If God promised it, he will do it. Now go and get it. Now go find those promises in your life. And let God, let God who is able, help you along through it. So what do we have to do? All these things I'm talking about, what do we have to do to see these things come to pass in our lives? One thing, what is it? Trust God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You trust God this morning. Walk out of here. Trust God. Trust God. Live in faith this, this week and, and, gone, and going forward. Because what happens here is this. We can learn to place our faith in God. And I feel, again, this, this message is coming from a place where I struggle with faith a little bit in the last month. It's coming from a place where we can put our faith in God at all times in every situation. I, I want you to believe that this morning in your heart. Because then we'll walk in victory. Because then we will walk in that victory. In Hebrews chapter 11, 6 it says, But without fail it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe 
that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Meaning God will bless you. You'll be blessed. I don't know how that happens and I can't give you the words. It's something, sometimes it's just, a, it's, it's a spiritual thing. It's an uplifting thing. Sometimes it could be just something of a, a, a reflection of something you're going through. He rewards us. He rewards us in a way that sometimes we can't even understand because we have different ideas about what rewards are. Sometimes it's just giving you another day on this planet to tell somebody about Christ. <laughs> that could be your reward. That could be your reward this morning. Because when everything else fails in your life, when everything else fails in your life, faith's going to stand the test. Faith's going to stand the test. test. And I'll tell you what, I will give you, and I'll tell you what, some of you can come up here and give a testimony to that right now. We might let the Lord down. It might happen. It might happen. You might let the Lord down. You might let him down, but he'll never fail. The believer. He will never fail the believer. Jesus Christ will never fail the believer who has faith in him. You grasping that this morning? And I know you might say, oh, this is basic. Not really. It is basic. But it's sometimes we take these little things like, we say, oh, that's faith, you know, and we're more than conquerors. We need to hear that. We need to hear it over and over again. In verses 7 and 8, he tells, he tells Joshua to call to carry out the law, and he goes on further about that. And he, he's basically telling them to be obedient. He's still telling them to be obedient and that they will prosper by being obedient. And sometimes that prosperity, we're not thinking about, maybe you know, you're thinking prosperity because prosperity has been misused, I, I would say, in the church in the recent years uh, to a place of it prospers the preacher. It prospers the preacher or his church. Meaning, oh, if you tote seed, you're going to get blessed and you're going to, oh, money's gonna, your money will multiply. Just give me, you give it to me and I'll make sure you get blessed. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. This is a different thing by prospering. Meaning you'll grow. You'll sow, what you'll see is fruit of the Spirit in your life, right? You know what fruit of the Spirit is, right? In Galatians chapter 5, read it when you go home. If you see yourself in that, that, that scripture in Galatians chapter 5, if you see some of those things of the fruit of the Spirit, hey, you're walking in Jesus. You're walking in Jesus. That's a good thing. So we talked about something last week about grace, right? And I'm glad we don't have to, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace, right? But that doesn't mean we don't be obedient, right, to God's commands, because God has many commands in the Bible. God has many commands for us, and to be obedient to those commands. It's very important, by the way, that we're not living this life nilly will, you know, like, well, I'll do what I want when I want, all right, Lord, and I'll get back to you on that. No, no, God gives us commands. God gives us, and that obedience to those commands, you know, will, will we see blessings to it? Just like here, what happened with the Israelites. So if we want to live in victory, as we come kind of near the end here, if we want to live in victory, Christian victory, all right, I'll go on. This is just kind of like the next section here. If part of that victorious living is you have to develop, and I'll say this because it has to be this way, a love, a love for the Word of God. Not a casual relationship. I'll pick it up. And this is not a rebuke or anything like that, because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a living example of living in Christian victory because a love of the Word of God I have. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be here. I might not even be alive. But this love of God, and it has to be developed. It's not something, hey, I've seen some people, like, like they come to Jesus and, man, they're, they're like on fire, and they stay on fire. But it's something that when you come to the Lord and you develop this wor uh, relationship, if you will, you have a love to, right? When you want a relationship with someone, don't you want them to, don't you want to develop that love, that relationship with that person? Well, that's the same thing with Jesus. It's a developmental type of love. You mean, you move step by step, forward by forward, but you keep moving forward with him, right? And you develop a love, and here's the easiest, I'm going to say the easiest way, but here's a great way to develop that love. See what he has to say in that book about what love is. We read all those things about love this morning, right, in Psalms. See what he says he might be, right now, he might have, there might be a word in there right now for you this morning. Maybe you're struggling with something. He loves you. But develop that relationship. It's not sometimes you snap it and everything is good. 
It's a developmental relationship. You grow, right? You grow in Christ. Like just as kind of Joshua, he was commanded to honor the law, right? And commanded, we're commanded to honor the book. You're commanded to honor that book of God. I'll say these things. We're to feed on that book. You see? We're to feed on the Word of God. And why is that, Tom? Well, because in 1 Peter, right, even think of it this way, that book you have, right, the first time you pick it up, is, here's what Peter says, as newborn babes, right, what does a newborn baby do? They, right, they, they first have milk, right, that's the first thing they have. And Peter goes on to say, you desire the milk of the word, that you may grow. See, you, you stay in that word, you're going to grow. You will grow. You may not understand everything. You may not pick up every verse. You may not pick every word. But you're going to grow. Somehow, some way, you'll grow. If you pick it up and you, you stay consistent with it, you'll grow. You'll grow. You'll come in here and say, well, Lord, Tom, the Lord spoke to me this week through his word, and I want to share something with you. I would say, praise the Lord. Let's do it. Let's share that word this morning. And then, you know, you know here, you're to feed on it. Right? You feed on that book. But also this. It's really important now. This is part two. You don't live it. You don't live the word. You don't live by the Bible. You live your life by the Bible. What does the Bible tell us? Do you realize the Bible tells us how to live? It tells us it's instructional. The Bible is instructional. There's so many instructional things out there. People think they're really smart today. Well, they say, I'll Google it. I'll do this. I'll read that. And you know what? I'll go to YouTube. I'll figure it out. But this is a whole different thing we're talking about here. We're to live by the Bible. In Psalm 119.11, it tells us, Your word I have hidden in my heart. See, that's where it has to go. That word, the book of the Bible, it has to go in your heart. That you, why? Why does it have to go in your heart? Because you know what? That it helps you to keep away from sin. Right? You stay in there and you grow and you strengthen your heart. It'll help you when that temptation comes and you go, I, 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 No, no, Lord. Uh, your word tells me. That you'll never leave and say, you're with me. I'm, I'm not going to go there, Lord. I, I know that path that it wants to take me down. That sin path. And then this. <laughs> he tells us in Jeremiah. I love this verse. Jeremiah 15, 16. He says, your words, meaning the Bible, right? For us this morning, were found and I ate them. Oh, well, yeah. Don't eat the pages, right? <laughs> but read them. He says here, your words were found and I ate them. And, I, and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I pray that is for you this morning. That God's word is, will have, you'll rejoice in your heart when you read it. Don't get discouraged though. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't make sense to you right away. Because when we do it, it tells us this also in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3, that we're going to be blessed by the things that are true in our lives. The things that are true. True in God, not true in the world. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel. Listen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You have ungodly people in your life. I'm not saying you walk away from them, but don't take counsel, don't take counsel from them. They'll lead you down a wrong path. He says, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits at the seat of the scornful, but his delight is the law of the Lord. Meaning for us, the book, the, what, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. what we see here this morning is a call. And you all have a call in your life. I don't know exactly what it is for each one of you. You all have a call. Whether it's right now you're a parent and you're raising children, that's your call. Whether it's your call is to minister to people in a hospital or people that are sick. I don't know whatever that call is in your life. But everyone has a call. If you're a follower, if you're a follower of Jesus, there's a calling in your life. right? And sometimes... Sometimes you need courage, right, to go forward in that call. But we do this. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ in this whole situation. And I'll tell you this. For us right now, just as it was for Joshua, and I'm telling you this, Christian, because I truly believe this right now, because people, the world is trying to knock us off our feet. The world is trying to knock us off. He's trying to separate the church right now. And I've told you this before. God, and it's just like God's challenge to Joshua is for him to stand. See, God told Joshua, stand and go forward. 
That's you and me this morning. Stand. Stand. When the times get tough, stand. When the times get rough, stand. When you can't figure things out, stand. When you're going down a road and sometimes, you know, you're frustrated because problems aren't working out the way you think, stand. Because if you keep standing and have your faith and you trust God, God will lead you through. It may not be exactly what you want, but it will get you through and it'll make you better. It'll make you stronger. It'll make you a man, a woman of faith that you can tell people that God is real, that God isn't dead. Jesus is alive. All around us, and I'm telling you, I see this, I think, and you know, if you really kind of look even further, there's a lot of Christians that are just kind of like meandering away on the sidelines. In a time when we should all be standing Standing in the gap for Jesus Christ to a lost and dying dead world. That world is dead out there. You can see it in people's eyes. If you look in people's eyes and have a conversation with someone. I tell you, sometimes I can look at someone right in their eyes and go, this person is dead. They're dead. Not dead physically. And they're dead spiritually. We need to stand. We need to stand up and renew. You know what? Renewal. Renewal is a good thing. And renew our commitments to the Lord and say this. By God's help. And here's where I'll end it. By God's help, I'll stand and not fall all the days of my life. Amen? You praise the Lord this morning. You stand this morning. You trust God this morning. You have faith this morning. It tells you this. By God's help, I'll stand and not fall all the days of my life. It may be rough. It may be tough. It may be hard, but you won't fall. You'll stand. I Meaning you keep going. And the more, you know what? I pray the Lord gives you long life until he comes back. Because the longer we're here on this planet, the longer, the more opportunities we get to tell people the real truth. The truth in who Jesus Christ is. Who he was and what he's going to do going forward. That's true hope. It's not in... It's not in man, right? And Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50, 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. And that's my command to you this morning. My, not my command, my urge to you this morning. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable. Always, not sometimes, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever you do for the Lord is not in vain. Even if sometimes it feels that way. You know, you talk to people and sometimes they look at you and they go, get, get away from me, get away. That's not in vain, by the way. You may have planted a seed. You may have just planted a seed in that person. They walk away. They might go like this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear it. Down the road, they're walking down the road. It's, Jesus, you might have planted a seed in their heart. And at the right time, it will spring forth. Maybe somebody else has to water it. I don't know. But be steadfast. Be immovable. We need to stand. Do you believe it this morning? Come on, stand. Why don't you guys all stand? We need to hear God's call. We need to hear God's call to be brave. Right? It's, you got to be brave right now. You do. Hey, it's easy to go in your house, close the door and say, oh, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to do... I, I'm, I don't, I don't want to know nothing. God's call for us right now is to be brave and be strong. In Romans chapter 13, 11, this is where I'll end it right here. Ellie, you want to come up there? Verses 11 through 14. And do this, knowing the time. Know the times we're in right now. Know the times. Know what's going on around you. Don't put your head in the sand right now. Do this, knowing the time, that now is the high time. The high time to awake out of sleep. If you've been sleeping, Christian, awake. Awake. Awaken your heart. Awaken your, awaken your spirit. Awaken the word. Because it tells us this. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Hallelujah. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. If you're surrounded, you're around darkness right now, get yourself out of it. I don't know what that might be for you individually or, or, or whatever. If you're in darkness, and you know if you are, oh, I, I think as a Christian, you know when you're in darkness. He's telling us here in the scriptures, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. 
push it aside, he says, and then let us put our armor of light, meaning the light of Christ. Let the light of Christ come upon you. And then verse 13, he says, let us walk. Let us walk, right? It's always about walking. It's always about keep going. It's always about not standing still. He tells us, let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust. Sounds like the world, right? Not in strife or envy. But then here's the most powerful part, my brothers and sisters. In verse 14, he tells us, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Oh, that's difficult. Make no provision for the flesh. So when you feel that temptation, he's saying, don't do it. Don't do it because he tells us, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. When that temptation comes upon you, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray. Get in the Word. We all have temptations. We all have the things we know. Some of them are very private. We keep to ourselves. When those temptations come, he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we feel, he says to this, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts, because that's what it's about. It's about lusting. It's not about lust, physical lust, the different lusting, whether it's covetedness or, or things that materialism, all those different things. You don't need to fulfill that. All you need to do is put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the scripture tells us. And I pray that this morning. And I pray this and ask you this. Are you standing for the Lord this morning? Are you standing for Jesus? Not for yourself. We all like to think, hey, I can make it. I'm tough. I'm all right. I'm, I'm standing on my own. No, you're not. All it takes is one call from a doctor. Or I don't even want to go there because it's a tough thing. You're not standing on your own anymore. And you get a call and you got to go through all these different things. And these, you're all bewildered by all these different things. Like, wait, one minute I was good and now I'm sick? Or I'm going through something here? God calls us to stand with him. Come to the Lord. He'll get you through it. Are you standing for the Lord? Or are you falling out of the way? Get back up. Get back up. Come on. Get back up. God's calling us right now. He is. Even this remnant. I would call us a little remnant of, you know, our well was, our well was over there in Berkeley. Our other well, well was over there with, uh, when we were in middle school and you guys are with Keith. And there's all different wells being put in this, this area right now. Keep digging, right? You get a dry well, go to the next one. And that's where we are right now. Believe that in your heart right now. Are you standing from the Lord? Are you calling from the Lord? Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, this opportunity to preach this this morning, Lord, because it was heavy on my heart, Lord, that you would send Joshua out. And, and you know, I remember, Lord, that Joshua saw, they saw the giants in the land, but they came back and they said, him and Caleb said, we can take them. We can take them. And that's why I feel this morning, Lord, there's giants in the land. There's giants in the land right now with us. But Lord, let us not be like the other ten that went out with Joshua and Caleb and, Caleb and said, Ah, we can't. No, they're going to they, they're gonna whoop on us. They're, we can't beat them. Don't let us be like that. Let us be like Joshua and Caleb. We can go forward. We can take the land that God has given us this morning. Take it. Write it on your heart. Believe it. Stand. Take your faith. Grow in your faith this week. Stay in the Word. And God will take you along. And what a journey it will be that you can turn around and pray. May, you know, may I pray you live a long life that you can tell people along the way, man, God was with me every step of the way. Sometimes I didn't know it. But He said, take faith. Have courage. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. amen. For our struggle, the scripture says, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the powers, the world forces of this darkness, the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And the scripture says, therefore, take up the full armor of God, the belt. Paul said, having your loins girt with truth. In other words, learn the scriptures, learn the word of God. This is how we resist the devil. And then Paul said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now the breastplate was made of bronze backed with tough pieces of hide. And the breastplate of righteousness 
is what we get from Jesus Christ when we come to him as our Lord and Savior. Because our righteousness, our goodness is filthy rags in the sight of God and we receive the breastplate of righteousness so that when the devil shoots his fiery darts, they can't penetrate that breastplate. And then thirdly, he says, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It means that you should have the peace of God in your heart. The serenity, the joy, the happiness that Christ gives should be in your heart so that when troubles come, Satan will not be able to get close to you. And then fourthly, the Roman soldiers carried a shield. The scripture says, in addition to all taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. Satan is always shooting his missiles and his darts at us. We need the shield of faith. Intellectually, you cannot come to Christ alone because your mind has a veil over it put there by the devil. But when you come to Christ, your mind is illuminated by the Holy Spirit and the things that you didn't understand before, you now accept by faith and you put on that helmet and that helmet protects you against the enemy. And then there's the sword and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the offensive weapon. And the scripture says that the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. When Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus used the sword, the Word of God. And then the seventh and the last thing is to pray. Pray without ceasing, said Paul. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. Check your armor. Is it in place?